Hi, my name's Ewan and I'm at the Church of Scotland's General Assembly in Edinburgh. If that doesn't mean anything to you, then this video might not be for you, but you know, keep watching, you might be entertained, I don't know. The essential crux behind the General Assembly is the coming together of all of the major committees that make up most of the business that goes on in the Church of Scotland in front of a select group of ministers, deacons and elders, along with uh, some youth representatives, of which I am one, and uh, various delegates from other parts of the world and other denominations, and they all make up what is called the General Assembly. This report, as it were, is all going to be coming from my perspective, so the perspective of a youth representative, meaning it's not going to be the most comprehensive overview, but I do feel that it's a perspective that is widely misunderstood, particularly by most of the quite more important uh, commissioners of the Assembly. The General Assembly happens over the course of an entire week and the unique thing about being a youth representative is that you get put up with all the other youth representatives in a hotel and we all basically live together in harmony. Tonight is the first night of the assembly proper. Last night all of the youth delegates arrived here in the hotel and we all met and had our preparation for today which is another thing that it makes it good being a youth representative because we prepare for each of the debates for the coming day the night before. Today's business pretty much went off without a hitch. There were a few amendments here and there to things the committees wanted to do, but by and large, it was rather uneventful. The next day of business we'll have will be the day after tomorrow, because tomorrow is Sunday, and as a church, we don't do anything on a Sunday. But on Monday, we're going to be making a very big decision, and a lot of eyes from within this country and out with it are going to be on the General Assembly that day because we're going to be deciding on what direction we're going to start taking on the issue of same-sex relationships, particularly with regard to ordained people, as in ministers. So that should be very interesting, and I will let you know about that on Monday. The youth representatives have a positive influence on the atmosphere of the General Assembly, and I think it brings out the best in the commissioners. It's definitely worth coming. I think it's not only what we can contribute to the General Assembly, it's what you can get from it as well in your own personal experience. So you may be wondering what that was all about. I'm going to be interviewing other youth delegates as the week goes on to get their general feelings on the Assembly and how things are progressing, basically just so you don't have to be looking at my face all the time. Although there's no actual assembly business on today, we are still going to be quite busy because there's a massive event taking place in Princess Street Gardens called Roll Away the Stone and in these kind of situations youth delegates tend to get thrown around here, there and everywhere wherever help's needed and that is what I'm going to show you now. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You and you hardly recorded anything at all. In fact, you basically walked past everything. Well, you see, the thing is, I intended to walk past everything to have a general overview of what the whole thing was all going on. And then I bumped into this lot and I forgot to film anything else of the Roll Away the Stone event. It was an excellently organized, amazing, very enjoyable, fantastic event. Tomorrow, as I've said before, is going to be the Special Commission on Same-Sex Relations report to the General Assembly and that is going to be very, very contentious and very, very lengthy and that should be interesting and I will let you know how that goes tomorrow. It's worth it, but it does drain you a lot. But, so yeah, you have to rely on God a lot to get through the week, which is a good thing. This is a mother church for a lot of people. And yeah, it's definitely a big thing and I definitely do feel a huge part of all this, of something huge. So a lot of stuff happened today. First of all, on a personal note, during our opening worship among the youth reps before we headed off to the assembly hall, the theme was understanding people and listening to people. And as part of that, a number of us spoke in varying languages, reading from the same passage in the Bible. and. I was given, or rather I stated that I could perform the reading of the passage in Italian and the fact of the matter is I haven't actually spoken Italian in a long time but never mind, that was nice. The second bit of loveliness that happened for me today was that we performed communion at the General Assembly and I was one of the people handing it out which has always been considered a very nerve-wracking event for anybody doing it regardless of whether they've done it before or not which I hadn't. And my final piece of wonderful, wonderful news is that after having attended 
three general assemblies now, I have finally spoken at an assembly, which was fantastic, and I got a fair little applause for it, and I got many, many congratulatory comments from people face to face and on Twitter, and it was just lovely. And my final piece of news about today has to be the result of the debate on same-sex relations in the Church of Scotland. The decision was made that the research that the Theological Commission would undertake would be in the direction of potentially allowing homosexual people who are in active homosexual relationships to be ordained in the Church of Scotland, which I think is a lovely thing. So that's that. It's been a wonderful day so far. Four lovely things have happened from my perspective, and that's just great. And I will talk to you tomorrow. I'm loving the other academy. It's incredible. And um, obviously, I've got some old friends, and I'm making new friends. And it's really nice to feel about the hotel and the prep that we do. It's beginning to be a wonderful thing. Coming to General Assembly is incredibly worthwhile, um, especially if you're a root youth rep. It's incredibly encouraging and positive that the, the wider Kirk recognises the importance of a young person's voice and, and young people's voice and that they go to such lengths to listen to what we've got to say. Well now, that was quite a day. A number of the youth reps, myself included, although I didn't take a huge part in things, uh, spent the time of the first two or three reports in the rainy hall, which is just outside of the assembly hall where you can just sit and you can see what's going on on a screen but you're not, you know, actively taking part, it's just sort of a, a cafeteria. We were discussing the Church and Society Council debate which would be taking place in the afternoon and creating many, many amendments and deliverances and such like. And for the part of the debate entitled Young People and Decision Making, we basically took over the debate for a very, very long time, an unforeseenly long time. And one simply fantastic thing that has come of today's debates with regard to young people is that one of our number proposed a deliverance which passed completely, which I did not think was going to happen, which means that there's going to be research done now with regard to how young people, that is in youth reps at the General Assembly, can receive first an indicative vote, um, which will simply allow us to express what we think in a, in a sort of voting fashion without actually having an effect, and then a declarative vote, which will actually give us a proper vote so that is very, very exciting, even if nothing comes of it, just for the, the, the discussion to have begun is wonderful. Tonight we're having some sort of a soiree, shindig, shebang, a thingamajig, I don't really understand it, I just know that there's going to be people in the place where we normally do our youth repping, and they're not going to be youth reps, and it's going to be some kind of event, and that will follow now. <laughs> Clowns sits me with a smile on your face. Your smiles are free. And he feels some other way. And he feels some other way. And he feels some other way. night was quite good. Uh, we had a fellow playing named Ian Morrison who's apparently kind of a big deal. I don't know. And uh, we had a good few commissioners there for our evening prep which was lovely. I have a little confession to make about today. It is one o'clock in the afternoon and I have only just come out of bed and a shower because when I woke up this morning I was feel, feeling rather unwell and so I have missed all of this morning's business at the assembly which I'm um, very, very unhappy about, particularly because I've missed the first five deliverances, I've been told, of the Review and Reform Report, which I've been looking forward to. But there's still the, the majority of it to go, so I'll definitely um, be able to catch up and have some inkling as to what's going to happen with it. I was quite saddened by what happened uh, on the report of the panel on Review and Reform. Uh, even though I wasn't there for the morning's business, as I stated, I was there long enough to catch up 
and it turned out someone had proposed a counter motion to sections 7 to 17 of the deliverance, which, as you may have gathered, was the majority of the panel's report. And that counter motion went through. This is a, a practically last minute counter motion someone put through that has superseded a year of work. At least a year. I'm not sure actually, it might have been more than a year. I'm just saying that I really don't think that was appropriate. And that's all really from tonight. It's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed getting to know different people from different presbyteries. I've really enjoyed watching a church move to the um, move during the week, especially with them um, the report in church and society where most of the youth delegates got up and either asked a question, proposed a new deliverance, or like myself, almost got them to suspend the standing orders. We're asking them to bring three reports to future general assemblies, which is just something that's really quite big and major for the church. So you're probably wondering what this get-up's all about. Tonight has been our annual lovely, wonderful, fabulous night of glad raggery. It's the night that we meet the moderator of the General Assembly and then move on to Holyrood Palace for the palace reception and the beating of the retreat, which I don't actually understand why it's called a beating of a retreat, but there's a lot of bagpipes and marching and such like. One particularly odd thing that happened for me was that while I was uh, mingling with Sarah, we happened upon a couple of old lady guild people and they decided that it was about time that I proposed to Sarah and that our wedding should take place in their presbytery in Dumfries and that was frightening. But besides that, before all that happened, there was business today at the assembly and it was difficult, difficult business. We had a couple of overtures which is basically something that happens when a presbytery decides that it doesn't like what a council is doing or wants to instruct the council to do something in particular and come to the General Assembly as a presbytery rather than just having representatives of that presbytery at the Assembly to be themselves and express their own opinions. There were two overtures, they were unrelated but they were both discussed at great length and in fact the report that was put through today that those two overtures occurred on has not been completed, which means that some of the report is going to have to be taken tomorrow, which means that tomorrow's business will finish significantly later than anticipated. So, uh, today's been difficult and tomorrow will be more difficult than expected, but hopefully we'll, we'll manage to get through it. I honestly don't know what will happen if actually we don't manage to get through all of the business tomorrow. Does the assembly get extended for another day? I have no idea. <laughs> We've had a really good group this year. Um, there's been quite a lot of controversy, but we've all kind of respected each other's views, and it's kind of made for for a good discussion this year. It's been a really good week. Um, there seems to have been so much business that we've not had much time to relax. So I'm kind of I'm really tired, really emotional, and just looking forward to getting to bed. <laughs> And so, the Church of Scotland General Assembly of 2011 has concluded its business. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I wouldn't end this like a pretentious TV show. The way that they got over the business from yesterday running into today is that instead of allowing us to run over in time, they simply eventually stated, we're going to just cut off the ability to debate at a certain point, and after that point we'll just vote yes or no on stuff instead of talking about things, which I find a little bit unfair. <laughs> But at the same time, things do have to run at the right time, and so I guess there wasn't much getting around it, really. I'm really quite sad to see it end, to be honest, because it's absolutely been my favourite assembly in terms of the business that goes on and, and how well I've interacted with the group as a whole. It's just been brilliant, and that's just going to make me miss it all the more. So I've had a great week, it's been really fantastic, I've really enjoyed it, I can't really come up with any better descriptive words for how good it's been, but it's just been great. And with that, I am signing off. Or something.